Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 5. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 12, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode was really good. I really, really liked it. I was really invested in the concepts they were going through, and the different ideas that they were portraying on the screen, and... I thought this episode was utterly intriguing and the way that it sort of left a lot of things hanging I really appreciated and really liked so let's break it down if you're new to these video reviews or if you want to share this around to your friends you know who watch the flash or anything maybe I can explain some stuff and break down some stuff for some of you new guys and for you regulars so let's go ahead and get right into this so the biggest thing that I took away from this episode was a massive easter egg and this easter egg was for a character, a new character called Red Death, and Red Death was introduced in Dark Knight's Metal recently. I've only read a few of the issues so far, I bought it when it first came out, but I haven't been able to get it since because I've just been so busy and I haven't had any time to go to the comic shop or I just really haven't had much time to read recently, so I'm going to catch up on all of that. But I read a few issues and he is really awesome and I recommend you guys do it if you have free time, if you don't have to do work or if you don't have school or, you know, exams coming up or anything. I highly recommend you go check it out because this easter egg was on purpose. They're definitely teasing whether he will come next season, whether he will come this season, whether he will come sometime in the future. I think it's certain that with them teasing this, surely in one version of the future we will see Red Death at some point. And so in the context of the scene, they talk about how Zoom and Red Death never killed as many people as Cicada and Cicada is supposedly immortal now as they see it in their eyes and maybe he is actually immortal due to his powers increasing but these are this is all in the future scenes and we see little Nora actually looking at the projection screen in the hall of villains in the flash museum and we see captain singh talking about it and so red death has been supposedly confirmed he's confirmed at least for this universe this version of the future and he's a batman and the flash character so you know that's a nice little hint towards batman as well so what point is he coming i don't know but i'm guessing they're teasing for him to come sometime very soon and i really look forward to that and so nora at the start of the episode and she ends off the episode in a monologue and a prologue and it's her verbal diary rather than just writing it down rather than just scanning it in in this instance she wanted to talk it into Gideon and Gideon sent it to Thorn as she says and so I really like the mysterious way they started off the episode as if she were narrating because it really was something different and I wasn't used to it and I thought it was a really great way to start and it's an interesting concept that she obviously sends over these writings but also sometimes she sends over these messages and in that opening speech she talks about how she feels like she is hurting them by not telling them this stuff and you know keeping these secrets and it's true it's definitely going to hurt them but she thinks it's for the greater good she's trying to save Barry from this fate that he's going to have in the future so she thinks she's doing a hero's work but as we know don't trust Fawn and I think Barry and Iris are not going to appreciate that she's helping and working with Thorn. Like, she's helping with that timer. I think he might be on death row. That's what people suggested when we saw that timer in that episode. So we'll have to wait and see. But we haven't seen her pop back and forth from the future in the last two episodes. But there was heavy hints in this episode to do with Thorn. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But we get to sort of start off after that monologue with them all skating together and I really liked this scene it was everyone just one by one came in and they were all rather good ice skaters which was kind of surprising apart from you know Jessica Parker Kennedy she was all right but you know maybe that was part of the character maybe she can actually skate but I was surprised that they can all skate I love ice skating but anyway that was just a nice little scene to start off the episode and sort of get them going before we get the machine that show has actually brought from his earth so like via the post office <laughs> but you know in the multiverse and so later in the future when we actually go inside Nora's mind and when Iris and Barry are there they're trapped in Nora's mind we see Iris in the future and 
she's actually in fact created these fake sort of memories of iris and in this scene we see a comic book and it's a cicada comic book and we hear the cicada theme and I just thought that was a really nice sort of teaser and you can notice it in some of the trailers I do believe and also below that a nice spot was there was a Grodd comic book saying Grodd is back and this is a teaser for later in the season because we know at the moment they're filming the Grodd vs King Shark episode so that's very exciting so it's a nice little teaser for what's to come but anyway moving on to a really interesting part of the episode and this has been you know some of the most interesting stuff recently this season is to do with Sherlock and his detective work and we get a nice Sherlock and Holmes reference in this episode to do with Watson I'm a massive fan of the Sherlock Holmes books and also the TV show with Benedict Cumberbatch so that was really nice to see for me but anyway so in regards to Sherlock he finds out about Nora's defense mechanism being reverse flash and throughout this episode he's dropping hints left right and center so he has it cracked down by the time that he finds out about reverse flash at the end of the episode being her defense mechanism aka she's always thinking about him for some reason and in regards to Grace it was Cicada so she's always thinking about Cicada and everything, she's always listening in to what Orland's actually saying and in this case it's she, in fact being Nora, is always listening to Reverse Flash and yeah, Sherlock knows at this point he's holding back at one point he was going to reveal it and then he just sort of goes off in another direction to save her from that for now and we see that Sherlock is in fact just waiting for the right point. I don't know when he's gonna reveal it It feels like it's ramping up to be very soon. So at this point. I'm certain he knows Yeah, that other handwriting is the reverse flash and we'll have to wait and see as to what happens after that And so a big story in the episode probably in fact the main story is to do with Nora and her being trapped in Grace's memories and we get some massive reveals in this sort of inception like world that they're in inside one's memories inside the others and you know talking to the conscious is very inception like I love that film so that was a really nice addition to the episode although it doesn't work exactly the same it's not the dreams it's actually inside the person's head the way they executed the concept was really good actually and so they're going to in fact by the end of the episode Barry reveals they're going to try and remove and take away Cicada's powers and that's something that Cisco has been doing more recently if you notice Cisco wasn't in last episode he was you know off in the lab in the North Pole and doing these different things to try and sort out this cure so he's not a massive main character right now which is fine if the actor if Carlos actually just wants to spend a bit less time on the set because obviously he's been around for such a long time maybe he wants a bit of a break every now and again and so he met this photographer in the episode she's gonna come back supposedly with Iris creating her newspaper and this is where I want to move on to talk about the timeline changes that were revealed in this episode so Nora reveals that part of the newspaper changed because the Central City Citizen, the newspaper Iris created in fact, originally founded in 2021 and now it's changed to 2019 so the future is now changing. The timeline is changing, stuff is happening that is different and so now with Iris creating this newspaper company actually starting it off opposite Ralph's office, they're going to be together I'm guessing a bit more but this is crucial because this is going to be what Iris is going to be doing a lot this season so they've ramped up a little bit and so it's nice to see that and timeline changes that they've been doing all will lead up to that crisis event and I think with them actually changing the future from what that crisis event was in fact in that newspaper I believe it's going to be amped up and brought forward to 2019 when we get crisis on infinite earths the new crossover this year for the next crossover and I believe that's what they're doing with these timeline changes I believe that they're ramping up to a massive change by the end of this season and probably the end of the season going to tease Crisis on Infinite Earths coming for the crossover with Supergirl, The Flash, Arrow and most likely Legends although they didn't come in the crossover for Elseworlds this year and I'm guessing Batwoman's going to return and everyone else who's going to appear. So that's very exciting that they're starting to amp up to that. And so in this episode we get that reverse flash mannequin, the defense mechanism inside Nora's mind. I thought that was really 
just a nice touch to the episode and although we didn't see reverse flash there was so much to do with reverse flash in this episode and it's been so intriguing recently as to how they're going to reveal this what's the true nature behind all of this and so by the end of the episode we see grace and grace just before the ending scene is seen inside, again, inside her mind in the coma. And at one point I was like, what the shit is going on here? Because we see Cicada, but played by a woman. And I was like, whoa. So by the end of the episode, you realize this is a version that she's seeing. It's herself as Cicada. So she talks to her own version of Cicada in her mind space. And so she is in control. This is what this is teasing. She's in control of you know what they want to do of what Orland's doing as Cicada because she's the drive and she doesn't want to wake up because she wants her uncle to actually continue doing this work because this is what caused the death of her parents and so she's very evil and I really like that twist with Cicada being a version of her and so the final thing I wanted to mention in this review is there was a scrabble board scene where you see that in fact it says toy for shui brother if you have a look carefully and so i think this is a teaser for the tornado twins just subtly you know putting in that shui stuff because that's nora's you know tagline word but the fact that they're putting in brother like underneath it it just seems like they're definitely amping up to maybe a timeline change maybe in this version of the future they have the tornado twins i mean in the new future with the timeline changes so that's very interesting and i thought i'd just point that out so anyway guys thank you guys so much for watching this video if you did enjoy it and if this did help you out please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new and i will see you guys later goodbye